All right, welcome to this defeating the watchtower number seven. And this video is is long overdue. I have jokingly said with my friends, uh, fellow Christian apologist friends, for years I should probably make this video, and we laugh amongst each other, saying, "Yeah, for the five people in the world that may be interested in it." Well, I decided to make it. I'm going to do it. Let's. I want to get this on record. Let's. Um, so I can call this done. Here we go. It is very common amongst Jehovah's Witness Christian, Christian apologists and Jehovah's Witnesses to refer to a Bible translation uh, called the Improved Version as the Archbishop Newcomb translation. So, let me be clear up front. This Improved Version is from 1808, and you're going to see here in a minute, um, is not the work of Archbishop Newcomb. It's not Christian. It is um, an, an anti-Christian Bible translation and why this video is being made. You are going to see a number of books in this uh, a video. You're going to see various translations of the improved version. I'm going to pick up a number of other books here that we're going to see from the library, some by Archbishop Newcomb and in a couple cases by other authors about the Newcomb translation. This entire book here is actually written on this arch, what's commonly called the Archbishop Newcomb translation incorrectly. Um, I got a two volume set here. Uh, gentlemen, you're going to become familiar with in a minute. His name is Thomas Belsham. This is his 1822 translation of the epistles of Paul. We are going to look at the 1950, the very first edition of the New World Translation of Jehovah's Witnesses. And if I don't forget, I'll mention their 1969 Kingdom Interlinear Translation. We are also going to look at this fantastic book. If you're interested in Bibles and Bible translations and learning about them, this book is just, I, I consult this book all the time. It's a historical catalog of printed Bibles, English 1525 to 1961, book published in 1968. Fantastic book. All right, so like I said, video's long overdue. This Bible cited by the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, you know, in support of their rendering of John 1 1. And the, actually, this improved version is cited by other non Christian groups, Seventh day Adventist cite this in their review and herald a couple times to support them, not not on John 1.1, 1, 1, but on other uh, Seventh-day Adventist uh, Bible readings. So they too had this anti-Christian, anti-Trinitarian Bible in their hands. This Bible that I'm talking about, it's really, it's the work of English, British, English Unitarians. That's where it, it came from. And it really, they designed it to support their concept their unchristian concept of who Jesus was, which happens to be the same Jesus as the Seventh-day Adventist uh, was at the time, and Jehovah's Witnesses, etc. So let's look at this first 1808 translation here of this Bible. So you can see here the Bible that I just held up in my hands. Here, here it is, very small edition, 1808. You look at the title, the New Testament, in an improved version upon the basis of Archbishop Newcomb's new translation. And you can see the signature of Thomas Belsham. And that actually is his signature on the page of this book. It's actually a signature I got. Um, I have numerous letters written by Thomas Belsham. I was able to pick up this signature. Uh, so, though he did not sign this book, I put his signature in this in this particular book. And then we can see here on the next page, uh, we, I went ahead and turned to John 1.1. 1, 1. You can even pause the, the tape, uh, pause the video, that is, look closely, and you can see, and the word was a God, is the translation. So, I stated in this video, this video is really to dispel the myth that, that this New Testament, often called the Improved Version, it's a myth that it's Archbishop Newcomb's translation. It's not. He translated a Bible. That's true in the 1790s. 
this Bible is made off of that translation. This is not his translation. So any of these translations that say the improved version, they're not Archbishop Newcomb's. They're somebody else's work. So with this, we're going to start, in, in our case here with the Watchtower, where it all started in 1950 with the first release of the 1950 New World Translation, which you can see here on screen. We have the 1950 New World Translation of the Christian Greek Scriptures. That's when it was first published. This is the first edition. You can see the copyright page, 1950. Let's look at John 1.1. 1, 1. Read along with me. John 1.1. 1, 1. Originally, the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. So, there we go. The Word is a God. Now, in that book, it, reference, it takes us to an appendix of the New World Translation. And it tells us what? The Watchtower says, We cannot claim to be the first to render the sentence in John 1.1, 1, 1, and the word was a God. We find an early publication reads the way, namely, and it goes on, right, the, the New Testament improved version, yada yada, 1808, and renders John 1.1 1, 1 as the word was a God. So here we have here, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society saying, hey, uh, don't blame us for you know rendering our our 1950 New World Translation like that. People wow, did it long before us. You know we're not we're not the first. But you notice what's not in that appendix. And if you have that book, look and read the entire appendix. They will not tell you where this 1808 Bible came from. Whose is it? Who's the editor? The author? Etc. What's they don't say anything. It's just silence. Just Here's another book that says the same thing we say, so see, we're not so bad. Well, actually, I think the Watchtower is deceptive. Anyway, this Bible is often wrongly attributed to Archbishop Newcomb. And it, it's just not. And let me just, I'll just show you here. I think I have every known edition of the Archbishop Newcomb improved version, uh, translation. Here is another one. This is another one from 1808. Here's another one from 1809. And here's another one at 1817. And I think this is all the known translations of the improved version of the Bible. All you have to do, and I've done this for years, just search eBay. You can go search it right now. Put in improved, uh, improved version, maybe Watchtower, maybe Jehovah Witness, and you'll get lots of hits like I did here. Here's just two examples. And you can see here this eBay auction at the top says what? The, this Bible is by who? Archbishop Newcomb. Look at the auction down beneath it. The author is Archbishop Newcomb. So let me just say here. Uh, first, all these eBay sites sources are wrong. I actually contacted some of them in the past and said, you know, nowhere in, in any of the improved versions, excuse me, does it say that this book is authored by Archbishop Newcomb. It doesn't say that. And I've told that to some of these eBay sellers. I said, it doesn't say that. It says it's a Bible upon the basis of. It doesn't say by. I said, your, your auction's incorrect. And then they get all indignant with you and they say, well, I'm keeping my auction title the way that it is. Okay. I'm just saying. So how do I know this Bible here is not by Archbishop Newcomb. We're going to start here in 1968. We're going to start here with the Bible I showed you, not Bible, Bible catalog I showed you earlier from 1968, which is fantastic. Look with me here. There it is. Copyright 1968. There's the title page. Now we're going to look at the specific page here. Page, I think it's 333, 334. We're going to zoom in lower corner, right-hand page, and what does it say? It says 1808. It gives us the full title, right? The New Testament, improved version, tells us where it was printed, who the printer was. And then look at the notes. They often do this in this book. If they know anything about the Bible, in particular the translation, they'll put some notes there. It says this original version is supposed to show a Unitarian bias. Okay? Supposed. Then it says what? For an account of its production. Oh! Now we can find out how this actual improved version was made. Production. For account of its production and Mr. Thomas Belsham's share therein, 
consult the advertisement prefix to Mr. Belsham's translations of St. Paul's epistles done in 1822. Before we go there, let's look here. I'm just going to show you that in this historical catalog they show two other you know, editions which I showed you here of this uh, Newcomb translation or this uh, Archbishop uh, improved version as it's called and you can see those two here and I think the, actually the 1817 one is in there too. I just didn't take a picture of it. Now I showed you this earlier. Here's the Epistles of Paul translated by uh, Thomas Belsham, 1822. And uh, just opposing this title page is his picture. I think it's just kind of good to see a picture of the author sometimes. It can put a, a face to a name, per se. So we're going to jump to volume two of this two-volume set and to the very last three pages, where these three pages are all the works. In other words, everything that has been authored by Mr. Thomas Belsham. We're going to Zoom in, you can see here, works published by the same author. So he's claiming credit for all these. And some of these um, in here I actually have. I don't have all of Thomas Belsham's uh, authored works, but some of these I actually have. So these are this is everything that he is claiming credit for. So we're going to go to the third page. At the very bottom, it says this. Also lately published and sold by R. Hunter is what? the New Testament in an improved version upon the basis of Archbishop Newcomb's translation. What we have here is Mr. Thomas Belsham in volume two of his epistles of St. Paul claiming credit in there for all of his published works and one of his 50 published works is this New Testament in an improved version got a confession actually don't I an admission by Thomas Belsham to say yeah um, it's mine <laughs> he's claiming credit for it in his books he published in 1822 well you know what we actually knew before 1822 that he did this we knew because we're gonna start here with this book from 1814 uh, that you're gonna see here on screen with me right now so this book here is actually a book written on the entire um, New Testament and the improved version, you can see, edited by the Unitarians. This whole book is on this heretical translation of the Bible, and it's from 1814. We're going to look here on pages 12 and 13 in the preface to this book. We're going to zoom in the bottom of page 12, and it says, let's just look at the whole paragraph. It starts off with, it may. It may be expected, perhaps, that I should notice Mr. Belsham's book on the person of Christ as published since my own remarks and repeating all the criticisms and corrections of the improved version of which also he has commonly been reputed to be the principal editor. So Mr. Narns knew at that time that Mr. Belsham was probably the editor the improved version was likely not the work of Mr. Belsham solely, the work of many others who, as far as I know today, we still don't know everybody's name. But we do know, and again, you saw in 1822, Mr. Belsham's taking credit for the book. But here's what we do know, and actually from a friendly source. You're going to see this book here in 1819, which is actually very enlightening. Just look at the title page of it with me here right now. It's a plain statement and scriptural defense of the leading doctrines of Unitarianism. This is a book defending Unitarianism. This book also contains, look in the middle of the title page, it has remarks. And it's going to contain what? Our remarks? The red lines say what? It's a candid review of the text of the improved version. So here we go, specifically related to this Bible in question. Look with me here the green underlying text. It says, and to the Unitarians as a body belongs the exclusive merit of having endeavored to procure and publish a translation founded upon that text. The text he's talking about here is the text of Griesbach. The text of Griesbach, come back with me here and I'll go back to the, to the page in a minute. This Unitarian translation was upon the basis of Archbishop Newcomb's translation. 
Archbishop Newcomb did a translation of the Bible in the 1790s upon the text of Griesbach. So what you just saw on the screen was the author is telling us in this book here that the improved version, which is upon the basis of Archbishop Newcomb's Bible, and Archbishop Newcomb's Bible is upon the basis of the text of Griesbach, that's, that's what the Unitarian translation is built upon. It's built upon Archbishop Newcomb's translation of the Bible, which was done on Griesbach's. That's all he's saying. But he's admitting to us that it's the Unitarian translation. Let's go back to the screen. And he says this, The late Archbishop Newcomb now has passed. The late Archbishop Newcomb, whose orthodoxy was more than questionable on one or two particular subjects, printed what he modestly called, remember I told you, he did his own, an attempt towards revising our English translation of the Christian Greek scriptures, in which he professed generally to follow the text of Griesbach, just like I said. However, now he's going to talk about the improved version. This translation, this Unitarian translation, was adopted by the editors of the improved version as the basis of their own. And then, keep reading with me, actually, after the blue lines. Not as some have insinuated, that the name of this respected prelate might operate as a sanction to its work. If you have to stop, read that again, because what this text, what this author here just told us in this book, Archbishop Newcomb is not approving of and is not the owner of the improved version of the Bible. Clearly stated in 1819, it's not the work of Archbishop. Bishop Newcomb, period. So we just read another author who told us that the Unitarians are the authors, the creators of this book called the Improved Version. It's not Archbishop Newcomb. So let me be clear. Archbishop Newcomb was not an anti-Trinitarian like Jehovah's Witnesses uh, at that time. They were actually called uh, International Bible Students. They weren't called Jehovah's Witnesses yet. And, and the Seventh-day Adventists of that time. They weren't anti-Trinitarians like them, or the Christian Connection, the Christadelphians, etc. Archbishop Newcomb was a Trinitarian. You can say lots of things about his theology, but he wasn't anti-Trinitarian like these other groups. Let me prove it. Let's look at something that he did here in 1809. He made a English harmony of the four, event, another, a harmony of the Gospels, 1809, just one year after the Unitarians took his Bible translation from the 1790s and polluted it. So, on page 2 of this Harmony of the Gospels, now there is no Matthew, Mark, or Luke rendering of John 1.1. 1, 1. That's why those columns are blank. But look how Archbishop Newcomb, William Newcomb, translates John 1.1. 1, 1. Beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mic drop moment. Archbishop Newcomb, you can say, like I said, lots of things about him. He was a Trinitarian. These improved versions, often called the Archbishop Newcomb version, are not his work. They are the work of Unitarians. They are the work of anti-Christians. We knew in the 1814 book that I showed earlier, 1819 book, um, just hold them up again, that I showed you earlier. These two both, we knew then who the authors were of the improved version. And we knew that it was an Archbishop Newcomb in 1819, coming from a friendly source. We knew in 1968, even, that it's a Unitarian translation. And Thomas Belsham claimed credit for it. So here's what we have really going on here. Is the Watchtower in its books, in the 1950 New World Translation. Here's the 1969 Kingdom in a Linear Translation. 19 years after the publication of their first Bible, they still got the same text in here. Well, we're not the first ones to translate that. But they never tell you who it's from. We got an argument of silence by the Watchtower. Because I think if they did tell us who it was from, we would read it and go, well, no kidding. They believe the same heretical Jesus as you do, Jehovah's Witnesses. 
Unitarians believe in the same Christ as the Jesus of the Watchtower. We really have the Watchtower, one heretical group, citing as justification for their heretical New World Translation another heretical group called the Unitarians. That's all that's going on here. So the Watchtower, I think, is being deceptive and has an argument from silence to figure if they just don't say anything and tell everybody who the author of the improved version is, it, it appears that it's other Christians. Because I've had Jehovah's Witnesses tell me as much, when really it's not. So, Archbishop Newcomb, not the translator of the improved version of the Bible. It's the work of anti-Trinitarian, unchristian English Unitarians.